High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Vineland versus Melville, the rivalry part two. Yesterday, the fighting clan of Vineland defeated Melville 14 to four. So we'll see how part two goes for the Thunderbolts. Of course, the Vineland squad would like to create a sweep. Fred Melendez along with Ariel Melendez, and the condition's not exactly supreme. It's a little bit chilly out there, so we'll try to make it back for a 7 o'clock game. The rain has stopped. It wasn't really raining that hard for that ball, but hopefully that's expected to hold off. It looks like pretty blue skies, or as blue as it could be at this part of the day. Gray clouds seem to be moving out, so we should be good on rain. Uh, we'll just be dealing with a little bit of the cold elements tonight. Yeah, I see a, a peak of sunshine to the far left field side of things, so hopefully that means that the rain will not be a factor as both teams, of course, looking to win this game. And Noble certainly wants to uh, atone for what happened yesterday in the last couple innings. Basically, Ariel, they have to prevent walks and hit batters. That's that's what really hurt them yesterday. Yeah, and that's been a problem in the two games that we've called uh, this season. Is starting pitching um, hasn't been able to really get the job done. Um, they've been walking. They've been hitting batters a lot. Uh, they're going to turn to a different arm that we've seen this season. Sergio Draz is going to be on the mound for Millville. Uh, that's going to put Kevin Dick at shortstop. We'll get into obviously the field lineup a little bit later, but. A little bit different look for the Thunderbolts today. We haven't seen Sergio Draz start a game. I think we've seen him come in relief, um, but we haven't seen him start a game. So we'll see what he's got on the mound. And he's definitely going to have a tough test ahead of him with some of these uh, line hitters. And I have to uh, mention the fact that we've seen Kevin Dick play different positions, left field, catcher, and now he's the shortstop. So a jack of all trades. That's something that Noble can hang a hat on for sure. Yeah, they definitely appreciate what Kevin's done for them, um, especially this season. He's had a great start in the games that we've seen. Again, um, has played pretty well, driven in some runs. He's got a home run um, in one of those games as well. But yeah, very versatile player. That'll go a long way for him, um, especially as you know as he gets after his high school career and wherever he decides to go next. Having that versatility where he can play a bunch of different positions, that's always going to help you. Well, why don't we go ahead and put up the starting lineup since we have a moment here. We'll go with Millville's first because they are batting first here at the home of the Fighting Clan under the lights at Vineland High School. So the lineup goes pretty similar to what we've seen throughout the season. The pitcher this time, Sergio Draws, will be leading off. Batting second, playing his customary first base is Connor Lacey. Today, the shortstop, as we mentioned, is Kevin Dick. He'll bat third. The cleanup batter is Jacob Butcher. He's in the four hole, in the five hole as the DH. Caleb Hoffman will be batting fifth. In the sixth spot, playing at third base is Cole Mulherin. Left fielder batting seventh is Marcellus Preston. At second base in the eight hole is Trevor Yeager. And batting ninth and playing left field will be Mario Cottrell. The uh, DH is coming into play for um, Gavin McGuire, he's in right field as we mentioned. So that is your starting lineup for the Thunderbolts. And the alignment for the uh, defense, can we get that for Vineland? So since they're taking the field first. All right, oh, well, that's the starting line. We'll, we'll <laughs> go with that, that's fine. Uh, Yoan Felice will be the first hitter for Vineland. He's playing in right field. Benny Andrioli will be batting second. He is today's starting pitcher for Vineland. In the third spot will be Justin Morris. He's playing at shortstop. Cleanup batter who uh, did a nice job yesterday for sure, Mario Toro. I think he actually wound up picking up the pitching win in relief uh, because the game was tied when he took over and Violent uh, put it on with two back-to-back -back five run rallies. In the fifth spot, batting in the DH, Kyle Lamontier will be batting for third baseman Eric Kronk. In the sixth Everett. hole, Everett. Did I say what they said? Eric. Eric. Okay. <laughs> Everett it is. We'll get, we correct ourselves. All right. Everett Kronk will be playing at third base, and he is uh, the man who uh, Lamentier is batting for. Batting sixth and playing in center field will be Christian Willis. The second baseman is number 18, Xavier Etheridge. Batting eighth and playing in left field is Jared Gentilini. And the catcher batting ninth is Anthony Gonzalez. As we mentioned, the starting pitcher is Benny Andrioli. So there's your starting lineup. 
when Violent gets to the plate. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. We'll see if it's meant to be for Millville to reverse their fortunes. And again, basically, they'll have to avoid uh, all the walks and hit batters that they had yesterday. That'll be a very important key to their victory today. Keep Vineland runners off the base paths. Yeah, and what we've seen from Millville on the other side, on the offense, is they've shown a lot of fight in their game and not giving up, not quitting when the situation's down. We saw that yesterday when they came up in that seventh inning down by 10 runs. They still put up a pretty good fight there. Um, they didn't end up getting anything to show for it, but still got runners on, still showed that they, you know, had something in them. Uh, we saw it against Ocean City where they had a couple rallies in that game as well. So this is a mobile team that doesn't quit that will try until up until the last batter to get back in the game. So hopefully we'll see something a little bit similar to that. But for Millville's sake, they'd like to have to not come from behind. They'd like to be the ones in the lead. Well, this is a good chance for them to do so. They bat first, and all the Millville orange and blue jerseys waiting to get up their cracks at the bat. Very shortly, we should see Vineland step onto the field with their defense. And it looks like we're just getting some last-minute conversations uh, between the two head coaches, Dan Fimiani and Kyle Jones. We were just talking over a couple things, and we'll take a look at how Milvo will line up as looks like we're just yeah, the, the, the just customary there, yeah. captain's walk. Uh, so starting from left field, Marcellus Preston, the center fielder, Mario Cottrell. Gavin McGuire uh, will just be fielding today, the right fielder. Uh, third to first, Cole Mulherin. Kevin Dick getting the start at shortstop. Trevor Yeager and Connor Lacey both have been the starting first and second baseman for Milvo and your battery today. Sergio draws the pitcher and Jacob Butcher behind the plate. Well, those are the nine that'll take the field for the Thunderbolts. Last minute instructions. Of course, uh, some uh, field rules, some ground rules will be discussed as well at home plate. They always do that at the beginning of the game yeah. just so everybody's on the same page. Yeah, sight lines, kind of areas of concern maybe, just anything that, you know, Vineland knows that Melville might not. Uh, they'll be doing that. We see Sergio draws the captain for Melville wearing that number one. That's given to the captain every year by Mike Trout. Uh, that was his number uh, when he played for Melville. So that went to Sergio draws this year. Trying to see who the Vineland player is. If he just turns just a I, little you know bit what? more. I'm going to guess. because this, Andrioli this is guess. probably. Well, it's either Andrioli. Maybe it's an honorary thing where Dawson, Dawson Carter. Dawson Carter could be. Yeah, there, we saw Dawson, Dawson Carter get injured in yesterday's game against Millville. Not in the starting lineup today. You hope that's just a precautionary thing. And, yeah, based on the fact that everyone else behind him, you know, kind of has a glove on, looks to be ready to take the field. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, number 14. 14, okay. So uh, at least I now we got a number. That uh, we don't have a oh, number 14 wait, in the starting lineup. We'll take a look at, uh, we appreciate Vineland uh, handing us the paper roster. Well, that's Garcia, actually. I believe Sam Walito Garcia was the one who went ahead and did the meeting at home plate for Millville, or for Vineland. Vineland yep. So we're just moments away from starting today's game. Fred Melendez along with Ariel Melendez. And we want to mention that you can watch us on certain avenues, and we hope that you already follow us. That's right, on Quinn Broadcasting, Facebook Live. Follow us also on YouTube Live. Actually, that's the subscription, isn't it? You were doing so well I was. for so it's long. It's just too, the social media drives me so I was so proud. Yeah, you were well. doing it. So, <laughs> subscribe to us yeah. if you want on YouTube, and you can follow us on Instagram as well, uh, QBC.TV. And if you're watching on television, you're watching on Channel 22. We do invite you to make comments on our Facebook page. We'll mention them as we can throughout the broadcast. We just appreciate everybody who watches the games because we enjoy what we do, and hopefully you enjoy the action that you witness, regardless as to the outcome. It's, it's a game, okay? So... There's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser. You just everybody to play as best as they can, and that's what athletic competition is all about. So we see our starting pitcher, Benedetto Andrioli, probably known as Benny to uh, his friends. He's warming up, tossing the uh, pitches to Anthony Gonzalez. Yeah, we saw Andrioli last season, I believe, when we came here. Uh, to Vineland. I, I know it was in one of the games, and I know he's one of their top pitchers. And if it was the game here, Milva ended up getting a late win in that one, so they'll try to get to Andrioli as quick as they can. 
you don't want to let him get comfortable. Yeah, well, Andreoli is doing his own mound work. He wants to make sure he gets good footing for his pitches. Love the way pitchers dig those trenches for themselves. Yeah, you can tell the mound is a little wet, whether or not that was from the rain or from the groundskeeping of the field. So yeah, just trying to get good footing. Be sure he doesn't slip as he goes down. Yeah, the only bad spot when I walked up to the field, uh, the very warning track in yeah. that corner left field looks a little bit uh, waterlogged, but the rest of the field looks pretty good considering the rain that must have fallen here in Vineland. And we're just moments away from the start of this contest between Vineland and Millville. Millville coming in with a 1-6 record. Their victory is one of the games that we covered, the Ocean City game at Millville. Vineland, meanwhile, is 4-3 on the season following yesterday's win. So they are above the 500 mark. And it just starts with one for Millville. They obviously got that one win against Ocean City but not a whole lot has gone right for them in terms of the record. So they'd like to start putting maybe a few wins together. You don't want to wait till late in the season to have to maybe fight to make the playoffs. You want to give yourself a little bit of comfortableness. I was trying to go comfort. I couldn't even get out the word I was trying to go with, but you want to be comfortable. Uh, so Sergio Draz is going to step in and we're going to start this one off. All right, well, the Thunderbolts are being a little vocal, trying to get Sergio Draz psyched up to start the game with a hit. And a strike is called. Now, our viewpoint oh, well, today, was a strike. I didn't he see called the it a strike. Yeah, huh? he called it a strike. I didn't see the umpire. I have a view of him, signal. and he did pu pump the fist. So we are now at one and one. Now, our view is not is going to be obstructed today, so we'll do our best to make the calls, especially to the right side of the field, as we are right underneath the press box. So all the plays to the right are somewhat out of our view, but we'll do our best here to get that coverage for you. Two and two the count. Lead off batter Sergio Draws will be followed by Connor Lacey and Kevin Dick. Swing and a miss. So the start for Andreola is with a strikeout. Now Connor, Connor Lacey has batted from the left side throughout the season. So he is in that side of the batter's box. Chopper to second, scooped up. The throw is in time. So that play goes Felice to Toro. Uh, check that, Etheridge to Toro. 4-3 and two quick outs for the Fighting Clan. Yeah, nice easy play over there from Etheridge who's getting the start this time at second base as Kevin Dick will try to keep this one alive. Looks at ball one. Fouls it straight back. One ball and one strike on the Millville shortstop today. Nice breeze, nice cool breeze, and cool is a little bit of an understatement. It's actually a little bit of a cold wind. Next pitch on the way, foul tip. So that evens the count of two balls and two strikes. Dick trying to keep this first inning alive for the Thunderbolts. Jacob Butcher, the catcher, will be on deck. And a swing and a miss. So a 1-2-3 start for Benedetto Andrioli. Two strikeouts surrounding a ground out. 1-2-3 inning, no score for Millville, and the Fighting Clan will bat for the first time as we take a look at that very effective off-speed pitch that gets the third out. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting.
Sergio draws on the mound today. The Millville shortstop for the most part, but he is taking the hill tonight. So far, giving up just four hits, two runs, only one earned. He's also got seven strikeouts in those six innings pitched. No walks, that's the important part. Is Ross has not walked a batter this year, something we we'll hope they he can continue. Well, in yesterday's game, Yuan Feliz, the leadoff batter, did his leadoff job pretty well. He got on base three times, all three times via the walk and scored two runs. So that's what you look for from your leadoff batter. Get on base and then try to trigger that offensive spree of runs. Wearing the number 21, he's playing right field defensively. Roz with the first pitch, swing and a miss. Looked like that one would have been low. Roz looks in for the sign and he will get the next pitch underway here. Strike is called. You have to appreciate the, the fact that the umpire will let us know if it's a strike, if it's called. 0-2 pitch, just missing. Yeah, Butcher did his best to try and pull that one back in. When you have to move the glove that much, usually the umpire can tell. All right, so it's one and two. Let's see if Draws can finish it here. Oh, he bounces that one in, so. Count now even a two and two, and that's the last thing you want to do. Again, an 0-2 count, and now you've allowed the batter to get right back into the count, two and two. So we'll see if Draws can finish it here, or if Felice can find his way on base. 2-2 two -two offering. Check swing. Yeah, they're going to say he did check. They checked with the first base umpire, and he says no swing. So Felice has come back and made it a full count. Payoff pitch getting set. Draws, delivers. That is smoked into left field. Base hit between the shortstop and third baseman. So after being down 0-2 on the count, the leadoff man does what he does best, get on base. And at that point, Draws had to pretty much give Felice something to hit. He didn't want to walk him. But Felice doing a nice job of putting that where neither the third base nor the stop to get to him. That'll bring up the starting pitcher for the Fighting Clan, Benedetto Andrioli. He's a left-handed hitter, so we'll see how he can move along the runner. Missing on the outside. Draws now at the belt. Comes to the plate that is popped up. It is well out of play, so that'll just be a foul ball strike. Count evens out at one ball and one strike. Ross checks the runner. Now he gets set for the 1-1 one, one offer. Swing and a miss. Might have pulled the string on that because it looked like Andrelli was a slight bit fooled. Yeah, I think Ross took just a bit off the pitch. Andrelli was maybe hoping for a fastball and got something a little bit slower. 
One, two on the way, swing and a miss. So a much better result on batter number two for Sergio Draz. One down, and that'll bring up Justin Morris. Today's shortstop for Vineland. Runner at first base is Yoan Feliz, one out. Swing and a miss. A very healthy cut by Morris. Ready with the 0-1 pitch, almost, oh, they do say it hit him. It hit his elbow, according to the umpire. Tried to go inside, but the HBP goes into effect, and that'll move Felice in the scoring position. Morris now at first base. And just the second hit batter this season for Draws. He's done a good job of avoiding that. Now batting, number again. He hasn't given up a walk yet this season. Seven strikeouts, now eight strikeouts after the strikeouts, Andrioli. He's got runners on first and second, only one out, and just two violent ones up to bat right now. Mario Toro had himself a game yesterday, hitting and pitching. He looks at ball one. Runners at first and second, just one out here for Wine in the bottom of the first. Curveball, some kind of off-speed pitch, got the strike zone. One ball and one strike. That was a good spot by Draws. There wasn't gonna be much Toro could do when he's that close to the plate. A good location there. Felice getting his edge off as Dick was watching him closely, wasn't he? He's on uh, pretty much in his pocket. I think Toro was swinging all the way on that pitch because that one was in the dirt. And he took a healthy cut at it, so he did not see the pitch out of the hand of Draws. So Draws in a good spot here. One, two, the count. Fouled off. So we'll do it all over again. Kevin Dick is right in the pocket there of the man at second base. <laughs> you want to keep him as close as you can. Wow. Both him and Jaeger are playing pretty close. Oh, and now another hit batter. The shame of this for uh, Sergio Draws is that he's been ahead in most of the counts just about, and he's hit two batters, which has now loaded the bases. Yeah, he had Toro kind of fooled in that it bad had him chasing low, but couldn't keep that one from winning the batter. So the bases are now loaded with one out. You see Kevin Dick and Connor Lacey there, both with taps to the back of draws. Just letting him know he's still got this. But he's in an even tougher situation now with just one out and bases loaded. And this is where you bear down and focus on just going after the batter. We're gonna have time first. It looks like uh, draws is gonna need the rosin. Not really surprised if the conditions of the field are a little bit wet. So he's gonna need that just to dry his hand up. We'll see if that helps him keep the ball in. Kyle Lamontier is the DH for Vinyl. That's a review of the signal from the catcher. First pitch bouncing in. Nice block by Jacob Butcher to keep it in front of him. Yeah, that's the last thing you'd want here, aside from a walker hit by pitches, to have one get behind the catcher in an easy run. Next pitch. Called the ball. 2 and 0. Nowhere to put him, so you don't want to walk him. Yeah, force at any, at, any uh, bag. So if Milma can find a way to keep this on the infield. Yeah, Mul Mulherin is playing in on the grass. Hopefully getting the ball and getting it over time. Next pitch is a strike, so the count goes to two and one. Yeah, because Jaeger's pretty far back on the grass on the right side. Kevin Dix about halfway. The count is now three and one as that pitch missed. 
So unless he really likes it, Lamontier has the option. Just look at it. Draws with the 3-1, and that one is outside. It doesn't matter. They got away from the catcher because that's a bases loaded walk, and that will bring on Yoan Felice to score the game's first run. And that's going to have Coach Fimiani come out to the mound to talk to Draws. It's really the first at bat that he wasn't really in it at all. Only threw one strike, and that didn't come till he had already thrown two out of the zone, so Coach Fimiani will try to settle draws down and see if Melville can get out of it just giving up the one run. Well, the ideal scenario is a double play ball, but you want to try to limit the uh, the damage here. Only one hit, but uh, two hit batters and a walk have been added to that base hit. one nothing final. Christian Willis, the center fielder, will be the next batter for the Fighting Clan. Now batting for 23. Well, Merritt's still playing in at third base, so you think anything going to him, they're going to cut off to the plate first. Want to get a double play in any way, it'll just depend on where the ball goes and where Milgo goes. First pitch by Draws is inside for a ball. One zero pitch from draws. And calls it outside, so two and zero hole. And the infamous barking starts in the violent dugout. We heard it all day yesterday. Ball bounces in. The runner breaks, and he will score. So the wild pitch will bring in Justin Morris, and it's two nothing for Vineland. Well, that takes the customary double play out of line. And the other two runners are now in scoring position as a result. And Draws has got to find a way to bear down and hit the strike zone. Willis most likely taking this pitch unless it's something, actually they called that a strike. They just changed it on the big board. So now the count is three and one. So that wild pitch was apparently called a strike. Usually uh, okay. not what a wild pitch is called, but. That's pretty well stroke. Good play by third baseman. Checks the runner. That's a great job by Cole Mulherin to make sure he grabs the ball. Looks the runner back to first base and has plenty of time to get the out of first base. Key defensive play for Millville. So that is the second out of the inning. Yeah, that's what you're hoping for if you're Millville. Well, something to come to the infield and Mulherin was the perfect spot for it to go. And Vineland might have thought about coming home if that ball was to the right side. Okay, check swing. I didn't, even need, I didn't even need to see the call. I could hear, did he go? Yes, he did. So a quick strike. Thanks, well, we appreciate umpires who let us know exactly what's going on. One strike. That and, one I think uh, he did hold. Yep. No, that time he checked. Yeah, yep. that, that one, you could tell it didn't get out as far as the first one did. Etheridge is the seventh batter of the inning. Is mobile, uh, sorry, Vineland has two runs across. Runners at second and third. Right there, strike is called. So again, Sergio draws ahead in the count, like to finish it here. One two pitch, fouled off. So we'll do it all over again, the count one and two. Mario Toro at third base, Kyle Lamontier at second. Draws with a one-two pitch, again fouled off. So Etheridge is battling very hard, fouling off the last couple. Yeah, he's doing a good job of 
fighting off some of Draws' pitches. If Draws can maybe put this in a good spot, Etheridge is obviously battling, so he might be swinging it even close. This will call time first, but maybe a good time for Draws to not throw something in the dirt, but maybe stretch the zone a little bit. See if he can get Etheridge chasing. Draws delivers. And just sir. that was what you call a uh, swing. I, I know the defensive a, 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 swing. Excuse me, swing. Yeah, he just wanted to make sure it didn't go by him. And so we'll do this one again. Etheridge fouling off the last three pitches. This will be the seventh pitch if he had that. Swing and a miss. So Draws does come back and get a key strikeout. However, a couple of uh, hit batters, a walk, and a leadoff single by Yoan Felice. A wild pitch allowed a run to score. There's your final strike and out of the inning. Final scores twice, and after one inning, they lead two to nothing. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking, which is small town focused and customer based. We know you, and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as the Thunderbolt Airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, president of Thunderbolt. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. We are done with one here at Vinland High School. It's a 2-0 lead for the Fighting Clan. And we'll take a look at the outfield defense, the infield defense for the Fighting Clan. Left to right is Jared Gentilini, Christian Willis, and Yoan Felice. Third base is handled by Everett Crunk. Shortstop Justin Morris, Xavier Etheridge at second base, Mario Toro at first. Catcher is Anthony Gonzalez and Benny Andrioli, the pitcher. He had a 1-2-3 inning in the first. That included two strikeouts. So Millville will put its middle part of the order up, 4, 5, and 6. Strike called. Jacob Butcher, the batter, will be followed by the DH, Caleb Hoffman, and then Cole, Cole Mulherin. One ball, one strike. Two and one. Andrioli not wasting any time to get these pitches across and Butcher trying to play a little mind game. Yep, stepping out. That is stroke to short. Scooped up and the throw across is in time, so that's one out. Handled by the shortstop, Justin Morris, gets it over to Mario Toro for out number one. And it sounded good off the bat from Butcher, but couldn't get it out of the infield. So that'll bring up Caleb Hoffman as you see the play being made once again by Morris. Ball one on the batter, Caleb Hoffman. Grounded right back to the box. Andrelli knocks it down and has plenty of time to just toss it easily to Toro. Five up and five down so far for Millville. And again, Millville's, when they're getting the bat on the ball, hitting it hard, but they're hitting it to the fielders. Third baseman Cole Mulholland. Mulharan. <laughs> These tongue twister names, I'll tell you. Cole Mulherin. Time is called. Not sure why. Uh, Mulherin uh, called time. Okay. Heard time on the batter. Andrioli has a move from his ready position, though. A one offering fouled off. So, a possibility of a very quick inning here. First two men are out, and now two strike count on the batter. Mulherin. Lofted to right center field. It's going to be ranged under and caught. 
Christian Willis doing a good job of just tracking it down and making the catch. Another 1-2-3 inning for the Thunderbolts. We head to the bottom of the second, winding up 2 to nothing. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking, which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, president of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. We head to the bottom of the second inning. Rhineland leading 2 0. Fred Melendez along with Ariel Melendez. Thank you for being with us on Twin Broadcasting Facebook Live, Twin Broadcasting YouTube Live, and on Channel 22. We want to say hello to Rick Dixon, Ricky Dixon, saying that uh, he's enjoying the broadcast again. Good to be back on. The announcers are a great team again. I appreciate the comment, Ricky. Thank you very much. We also have Daryl Lowers and Lucy Campbell. And just stepping in as I say that, Lenny Mazzola is with us, heavily involved with the Bay Birth System in Millville. So by all means, thank you so much for watching. Shermore Collins is also with us, as is Madge Mears. Heriberto Hernandez. Oh, I'm sorry, Heriberto Jimenez. Let's get these names right, Fred. Come on now. <laughs> David Krollinger is watching, as is Steve Phileas, Zach Douglas, Kirsten Lynn, Margaret Corson, and Carrie Greco. You're all welcome to join us anytime we do the broadcast, whatever sport it is. We thank you so much for watching. So Vineland up 2 nothing, and a swing and a miss by Jared Gentilini. And draws got Gentilini to chase a one almost in the dirt. Let's see if he tries that again. Swing and a miss. So again, draws doing a good job of getting in front of the batters. And he just has to find a way to put him away. Eight, nine, and one. The batting order for Wineland in this inning. That one just a little high. One and two to count, and the one-two pitch getting set to happen here. Low and inside. Boy, that third strike seems to be so elusive, doesn't it? Roz does have two strikeouts, but he also has a couple hit batters in the walk. If you want to find a way to put the batter away when you're ahead. That one's a little bit high, and the count is full. And he's gone from 0-2 to 3-2, so Genelini in a better spot now. Joss still does have a chance, as he'll, as Genelini will call time. But this is the problem we talked about at the beginning of the game, was putting runners on via the walk. Full count pitch, sails high. So once again, a leadoff runner for Vineland. Now the top of the order is coming up. Yuan Felice has the only hit of the game. Let off the bottom of the first with a single and wound up scoring the game's first run. He puts the bunt sign down, and pulls the bat back, so that's ball one. One oh pitch again, bunt try. This time he does go for the bunt and fouls it off. Nova has to be on their toes here. And Heron playing in on the grass. 
Lacey has to hold the runner on first though, so if he can get the bun down, he likely wants to put it towards first. Indicating bunt to throw over to first. And again, our view of first base is blocked, so we'll have to rely on what happens, whether the runner breaks after a bad throw or he's called safer out. Strike two called. Watch the one right down the middle. That was about as perfect as a location as you could get if you want to put the bunt down. So I have to think he's going to pull it back and swing now. One two offering is fouled off. Ross took something off of that one, trying to see if maybe he could get to speed the bat up a little. Again. Sergio Dries has done a good job getting ahead of batters, but he just hasn't put him away. He does have the two Ks in that first inning. That one sails a bit high. Two balls and two strikes. Matt Edwards fooled yeah, on that one. It wasn't even a full swing. I need to correct myself. That was Anthony Gonzalez. Gonzalez, yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. Third strike out of the game for Sergio now Draws. Batting. First out here, bottom of the second. Now we have to lose. First offering is in there for a strike. Draws looks in for the sign, checks the runner. And, and missing outside. One ball and one strike. Throw over to first base. On his back. Genelini, after the leadoff walk, holding that first base bag. Again, 1-1 one, one is the count. One out, one on. That pitch is fouled out of play. Again, Sergio draws, getting ahead in the count. One and two. Again, just wants to put him away. That one's drilled to center field. Left center field. Uh, left field, okay. Our vantage point, not the best. I lost it, and it was easily played in left field. We take a look at it here. At least put a good yank on it, but he pulled it into left field, and easily tracing it down is Marcellus Preston. And Kevin Dick went a long way for that one as well to try and help, but a good job by Preston to let him know it was all his. Andrioli the batter. Once again, a throw to first base, unsuccessful in getting the base runner. Just outside. Andrioli struck out his first time up. One zero pitch on the way. Just a little low. And Draz hasn't been able to get that call now in back-to-back -back pitches. He's got to fight through it. Genelidi getting his lead off first base, being held by Connor Lacey. Draz comes to the mound, chopper towards second. The throw is in time. So good job of getting the ball over to first baseman Connor Lacey by Trevor Yeager. 
It wasn't quite a one, two, three inning, but the only uh, mark on that inning for Vineland was a leadoff walk. We are done with two innings of play and Vineland still leads this one by the count of two to nothing. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No games, just great health care for everyone. Well, so far, Benedetto, Benny, Andrioli. People want me to call him Benny, so we'll call him Benny, okay? <laughs> I'm one of those guys that uh, likes to call him by their full name, but that's okay. We'll call him Benny because I think everybody else does. I don't and, know if people is the way to go when it's me. Don't, well, <laughs> you're probably not the only one. So no, sorry. I just remember last year um, they, let, they were – Really great at letting us know um, kind of what the players preferred and, and uh, what to call them. And every time he does come up to that, I do hear Benny Andrioli. All right, so we'll go uh, with that. A little bit easier to say as well. Yes, admittedly. But this group coming up to bat right now, we'll hope they can get to Andrioli. So far, Milbo looking for their first base one of the first six batters retired by Andrioli. The Millville dugout getting pumped up, trying to get everybody cranked up. Preston will be the leadoff batter. First pitch is called, what do they call that outside? Yes. He made a grunt, and I thought that was the grunt for the strike. Okay. Now that time he called it a strike. Count evens out at one ball and one strike. Swing and a miss, or a foul tip. And he swings the ball, gets away. The throw to first base will be in time. So officially a 2-3 put out, but a strikeout, number three now for Benny Andrioli. Trevor Yeager, the second baseman for the Thunderbolts, stepping up next. He fouls the first pitch away. Oh, he called it a strike. A little hesitation on the call. Don't do it! Okay. I guess you can see what the reaction was on the crowd. <laughs> well, that's the Melvo bench. And that's one of the assistant coaches who isn't very happy, to say the least. And another strikeout. Four strikeouts now for Benny it's Andrioli. And there are two gone here in the third. Now batting number 30. Andrioli's dealing up there. That'll bring up Mario Cottrell, the center fielder. First pitch missing as you see the strike out there. Cottrell puts it through the left side. First base hit and base runner for Millville from the nine hole. Yeah, if you can get those hits out of the bottom of your order, turn to the lineup over, you'll take that any day of the week. Good stroke just past the third baseman there. Everett Cronk couldn't quite get it on the dive. Draws with a chance to help himself out. Hasn't been perfect on the mound, but did what he needed to do in that second inning. So he's got a chance to give himself something on uh, up to bat. Not sure what that was as Andrielli does throw over the first base and then looks like he lost his balance or something going over to the left side of the infield. Ball gets away. Cottrell's going to easily scoot into second base. Ooh, I thought that throw was going to end up being well over the second baseman's head. We've got a uh, special visitor watching the game tonight. Parker Swift 
otherwise known as, uh, is it Swifty Swift, P Swifty Swift, one of them. He's a familiar face to the broadcast. Draws might have helped him out on that swing. One and one the count. That one's hit, and that's gonna go through the left side. Here comes Cottrell, he'll score easily. As Draws is now racing the second base, he will make it. An RBI double by Sergio Draws, and it's now two to one, Vineland. Draws did exactly what you want him to do. And drove that one where no one could get it. Force the left fielder have to go way back for it, allowing control easily to score. You see Draws there easily in at second on the slide. Give him great hustle on that play because he made what should have been just a single into a double. And now Connor Lacey up with a run, tying run in scoring position. He looks at strike one. So it's 0 and 1. Lacey wants time, so he'll get it. Yeah, Andrew only took at least two looks over at draws. It's a good job by Lacey to get time. He'll that man right there wants to come home. Yeah, he'd love to be driven in right now. Outside. This is the man to do it. Count is one and one. That one's hit to left field, tracing it down. That, he drops he it. He drops the ball. Late. Lacey will get in the second base, and the game is tied with two outs. Of course, the runner's going all the way, and there's the celebration of a tying run. Yeah, that one just kept carrying and carrying out there in left field. Let's see if we can get exactly what happened here. He just sure. got twisted around. He was one way, the ball tailed the other, and... Yep, off the glove. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably a play he should make. I'd go to say. Yeah. If it goes off the glove, usually it's something you should have. Melville's gonna take it either way to tie this one up, and that's back-to-back -back plays where they've traded places on second base. And Kevin Dick will try to keep it going. Swing and a foul. Just missed that one. <laughs> As someone definitely just said, you're lucky from the Melville bench. Yeah, Kevin Dick had the swing. Just couldn't time it. Kevin Dick has swung the bat well throughout the season as, as the games we've seen. Big lead off second base by Connor Lacey, so he's ready to come home. Yeah, that one didn't drop as much as Andrioli wanted it to. One ball and one strike on Kevin Dick. There are two outs, but Millwall does have two runs across. Popped up foul and heading out of play to the right. So Andreoli has a one-two jump on this count to Kevin Dick. Next pitch. Outside, two and two. They throw back and they throw it in center field. But dry it draws. That's at Lacey, yeah, and he was yeah, Lacey's jumped on. hurt. Yeah, he was, I, th I think the infielder there, who is uh, Etheridge, landed on top of him. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Lacey, because he would have been able to take third on that one. He looks to be okay. He's just holding that back a little bit, and yeah, I think this just might be a case of needing to just walk it off yeah, for a minute. Little recovery time. Yeah, the... Uh, player there landed on top of him. That was Xavier Etheridge, the second baseman. It was a pretty good move, actually, because Lacey has been getting a good lead off of second base. You can see it right there. He's well, just about halfway toward the uh, third base bag, and now another ball thrown. 
So it's three and two to count, a full count now on Kevin Dick. Foul ball. Good battle up at the plate for Kevin Dick. Lacey will make his way back and you, you can kind of see it on that view a little bit, the shakiness. We do have a camera operator up on the dugout. And I the pray for him right now because that dugout is rowdy. Grounded to third, backhanded nicely. The throw across the diamond is just in time. That is a great play by the third baseman, Everett Cronk, who had to backhand that one and make a long throw to first base to retire the side, as we'll take a look at it. Tight to the line, nice backhand, played it nicely and picked it clean, got the ball over and beat Dick by about a step. But Millville does pick up a couple of runs. They do it on a hit and I'm being the harsh scorer that I am, the error in left field. Yeah, but usually if it goes off the glove, say you have to have that one. Yep. But Millwall has come back to tie the game. It's 2-2 as we head to the bottom of the third. Going back to our Facebook uh, viewers, we thank you again for being here. Again, you can watch the games on Quinn Broadcasting Facebook Live and Quinn Broadcasting YouTube Live. We're on Channel 22. Want to make mention of a few of our watchers, to Donna Cohen. Bilo Ba is watching. Rachel O'Brien, thank you for being with us. Dawn Devinger. Rose Kuprianov. Linda Mooningham. Keith Schaefer. Sergio Silvestri. Anthony Stas wants Vineland to win this game as he says, go Vineland. That's cool. Charles E. Warren III is with us. Gabby Santiago. Naomi Miller. Charles Warren is watching us. Kathy Ryan is with us. Michael Wilden, Jeff Brenner, Thomas Hiles Jr., Irene Gita, Lucy Campbell. We are being watched here. Nice stuff. Sandy Davis Gribble, we mentioned Parker Swift, Noah Troutman, and a few others that we'll try to get to in a moment. Vineland batting here in the bottom of the third. It'll be the three, four, and five hitters for the Fighting Clan as Millville came back in the third to tie this game at two. You know, this is where you want Draws to have a shutdown inning. As and right away, he's got two balls on the batter. No, that's a strike. He he's short. late. Oh. Yeah, the, the hand signal's a little bit late, but I kind of moved to have the perfect view. Grounded towards short. Dick throws across, and a good stretch by Connor Lacey. Well, you have to think that back's doing all right. As Kevin Dick surely tested it out on that throw across. That was the strike that you thought was a ball. Well, he didn't indicate anything to me. I'm yeah, he was a little ball. late, yeah. He was a little late putting the strike call up. Here's a nice play by shortstop Dick. Scoops it, throws it, and gets him by half a step. Great stretch by Connor Lacey to make that out. There's a nice breaking pitch for a strike. Mario Toro was hit by a pitch his first time up that loaded the bases for the Fighting Clan. He drills that one to right center field. But ranging under oh. and making the catch, Gavin a little Mc bit of an underhanded oh. catch. Gavin McGuire made that a little bit interesting. <laughs> I think that one died in the air and he oh. thought maybe it was gonna carry a little bit more. They don't always make it easy, but as long as they make the outs, as you'll see here, good swing by Toro. It was definitely a good swing, but it yeah. does die, and I think McGuire had yeah. to adjust to it, and he does it just well enough to make the catch. Well, two quick outs for Draws, exactly what he wanted, and gets a quick strike on Lamb and Tier. So he's doing his job on the mound. Lamb and Tier walked in the first run of the game for Vineland. With the bases loaded, he walked. That forced in the first run, Johan Feliz. And now two quick strikes from Draws. He's got a chance to get out of the inning. Payoff pitch. Grounded right back, and they say foul ball. Yeah, must have got a piece of Lamentier on the box. And Draws will try to do it again.
Stepping back in is Kyle Lamentier, the DH for Vineland. 0-2 pitch. Missing low and away. Up draw still ahead in the count here, one and two. And Gabby Santiago Jr. draws settling in. Not good for Vineland if he's able to do it. We like what we're seeing from draws right now if you're a Millville fan. We want him to get this third strike and get himself a one, two, three inning. Draws with the delivery, missing. Count Eva's at two balls and two strikes. We're in the bottom of the third inning of a 2-2 game. Vineland scoring twice in the bottom of the first. Millville getting its two runs in the top of the third. Just low. That looked good from back here, but we are at an off angle, so we'll leave it at that. Now 3-2 after Draws had him down 0-2. Probably going to have to give him something. That one's looped in the left field, uh, right field, and that's going to be a base hit. So, again, one of those swings that you just want to make contact with the ball, and Lamontier gets himself a hit as a result. Up a nice job by Lamontier to battle back in the count. Draws had him down 0-2, makes it 3-2, and he's got to give him something to hit there. And, I mean, Lamontier might have chased one, but he gets the same outcome either way. It would have either been ball four or, as he did, a single that makes it to the outfield. Christian Willis now at the plate. Runner breaking on the first pitch. The throw is not going to be there. Oh, the throw actually hits him, yeah. yeah. It hit Lamontier, but he's all right. He's going to stand up at second base with a stolen base. All right, so that ends up being a ball. Lamontier getting a good lead off second. Swing and a miss, and... Yeah, that's, that's one of those... Why did I swing? Willis, now I have to commit. Yeah, Willis wants that swing back. Yeah, by the time he, I mean, that was never close to the zone. Again, Kevin Dick really playing tight defense, if you will. Strike is called. Another count where Roz is ahead. And he's got to find ways to put batters out when he's got two strikes. And he does this time. That is his fourth K of the game. No runs, one hit, and one left. Sergio draws answering after the single, and we head to the top of the fourth inning, all tied up two to two. And we'll take a look at this last pitch from draws to get himself out of the inning. And that's about as beautiful of a spot you can call it and just couldn't catch up to it. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. At Mintz Insurance. Well, we are heading to the top of the fourth inning. It's a 2-2 game. Andrioli back on the mound for his fourth inning of work. Melville was able to get to him in the last inning and tie this game at two apiece. So they'll try to keep the bats going. It's going to be Jacob Butcher leading off for Melville, followed by Caleb Hoffman and Cole Moharan. The same order that came up to bat in the second inning. And Andrioli retired them in order. So Butcher would like to uh, change that trend. Okay. 
Butcher grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Justin Morris making the play. Pitches down low for ball one. Andreoli again wasting no time getting pitches to the plate. 2 0 is the count. Yeah, as soon as he gets the ball back, he's already partway in his windup. That one's drilled to left field. That one's going to find the gap. All the way back to the wall. It's going to be an easy double. That was laced. Millwall's put some really good swings on the ball. That's their third hit to the outfield. I mean, we called the one the error, but that's the third ball they've driven to the outfield. As Butcher is going to get a courtesy well, runner. You can't split the gap any better yeah, than that. That was dead even on the split. Yeah, that was a double all the way for Butcher. He's going to have Dolan Potts as the courtesy runner. Well, we're putting some really good swings together the last inning and the start of this one. You have to wonder if maybe they figured out Andreoli. Caleb Hoffman hit back to the pitcher his first time up. Sails high and outside for ball one. So Dolan Potts at second base. But is down the third baseline. That'll definitely get the runner over to third. The play is made for the out, but the sacrifice is perfect. Everett Cronk to Mario Toro for the first out. Yeah, you can't put that one in a better spot if you're Hoffman. So the go-ahead run is now at third base with one out. That'll bring up Cole Mulherin. Drills it to left. This one's going to fight some room. All the way back to the fence, very similar to the leadoff double by Butcher. Millville now leads four to three. Up, oh, make that three to two. My bad. So Potts easily crosses the plate. You have the back-to-back -back doubles, sandwiched around the perfect sacrifice bunt by and Caleb Hoffman. That was a breaking pitch that did a good job of waiting back on. Boy, Melville is making a feast out of that area tonight. Yeah, like I said, I have a feeling they may have figured out Andreoli a little bit and what they want to do. Looked like Mulhern was a little pumped up when he arrived at second base. I I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I think this entire Melville dugout is pretty pumped up right now. They're really hitting the ball well. So we've got a way to go Cole in the comment section. Batter is now Marcellus Preston. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. He draws it the other way, base hit. Will they send the runner? Yep, they're gonna pull him up because a good play to get to the ball quickly. Yoan Felice didn't give him a chance to make that hard turn and go home, yeah, but Coach, that was hit well. Coach Femiani did wave him around at first, but yeah, take a look, again, a nice hard hit to the outfield, and yeah, that was a perfect throw to the cutoff man, so Mulherin would have been tight if he could get there, but. Millville just absolutely pounding the ball right now. Trevor Yeager, the second baseman. Looks at one low. Wouldn't be surprised if Preston tries to take second somewhere along the way here. And again, it's a situation where you're probably not throwing through. You've only got one out, so. Popped up and it's gonna be out of play. One ball and one strike on the batter. Leader leading off of first base. That's Preston, strike two on a breaking pitch there. Yeah, one Yeager, and two. Yeager letting that one go. 
Devils done a nice job in this inning. They want to try and put some more runs up on the board, pad that lead a little. And that's oh, a perfect bunt. That's going to score a run. And he's out at first base, but a little bit of a safety squeeze is successful. Coming home is Mulherin, and it is four to two now, Millville. Two great bunts by the Thunderbolts in this one. Yeah, that's fundamental baseball for you. Putting it in the perfect spot, this time down the first base line where you force the catcher to have to go for it as well. Andrioli making the only play he can, which is to first base and they will padding their lead a little bit more. Swing and a foul tip. Yeah, I think Cattro was just a little bit ahead of himself on that swing. Adrenaline's probably running high for this mobile team right now. But you still want to only swing at what you can hit. Mario Cottrell became the first Millville base runner in the, in the game. Number nine hitter got a single that led to the two run, two out rally in the third. One on one count on Cottrell. A little high and outside. Two and one the count on Cottrell. If he can get aboard, the top of the order comes up. A nice lead over there on second for Preston. Good cut, but he fouls it off. Hunter goes back to second base. Marcellus Preston with a single. Swing and a miss, and that'll retire the side, but it's another good inning. Long ball, although not long ball home run, but long ball with a couple of long doubles, and the short game working very well with two great sacrifice bunts, including a safety squeeze, as we see the safety squeeze right here that leads to the fourth run. So Millville doing a lot of good things in that top of the fourth. They now lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth, four to two. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at MintzInsurance.com. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Welcome back to Vineland High School. Friday Night Lights Baseball tonight. The second part of a Millville Vineland doubleheader from yesterday and today. Right now, the Millville Thunderbolts enjoying the upper end of this game, 4-2. Sergio Draz has done a good job getting ahead in the count in many bats. He's managed to strike out five along the way. All right, Draz will try to get the bottom of the order out this time. The seven, eight, nine hitters coming up with Vineland. Xavier Etheridge, Jared Gentilini, and Anthony Gonzalez. We've got another familiar name, uh, not just to the broadcast, but I think to this mobile team, David Rodriguez. I know he was watching yesterday, saying a couple good things here for Milvo. He said, you gotta win the inning. That's important here for draws is to shut down this Milvo lineup. Attaboy Cole, you know, we love to see the hit from Mulherin. And he said, glad to hear you guys broadcasting again. We appreciate that. Strike is called. David Rodriguez, a former first baseman for this Millville squad. Etheridge struck out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. That was drilled to center field. Ranging over and making the play. I'll tell you what, some of these balls look very well hit, but they hang up in the air. Cold Knights will do that where the ball will just die, and Mario Cottrell runs it down for the out. Yeah, there's no wind 
So nothing's gonna carry out. Looks like if anybody's gonna hit one out, they're gonna have to put a harder swing on it. Jared Gentilini, he walked his first time up. That one just a little high. Pitch is inside and low. Two and oh the count. Strike is called. Strike two. Same spot for Draws. He's now battled back. They're going down 2-0 to now bring it to 2-2. Draws looking to get that third one or some kind of put out. Strike three is called on the inside corner. Generalini, I don't think, agrees with it, but he is retired down K Boulevard. Yeah, he wasn't a big fan of that, but all that matters for Millville is that's out number two of the inning. And that, that broke. It broke inside. I don't know if it caught the plate, but it's the umpire's opinion that matters there. So Anthony Gonzalez, who looked at strike three his first time up, looks at ball one here. Next offering is high. Well, it's the same thing he did in the last at bat. It ends the same way. He's in a good spot, really. You don't normally say that up 2 0. Swing and a miss. Tell you what, you're capturing all the atmosphere of high school baseball tonight. Strike two. Yeah, they were trying to get the attention of Cottrell out in center field as they kind of align their outfield. I don't think he heard him. 2-2 two -two offering, fouled away. So draws battling back for the second straight at bat. And again, we get some more adjustments in the outfield. Still locked at two and two. Here is the two two offering. Strike three. Boy, you can't look at that one. It was right down Broadway. Back to back strikeouts and a one two three inning. The first, actually, yeah, there's the first one for Sergio Draws. Couldn't come at a better time as we take a look at the final out and strike of the inning. That's right there. You got to at least protect the plate. So we're done with four innings. And it's Millville 4, Vineland 2. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking, which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi. I'm Bob Millard, president of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Heading to the top of the fifth inning, Fred Melendez along with Ariel Melendez. Very
Draws is one for two. Scored a run. Chopped in the hole. That's a great stop, but I don't think he's going to get draws. An infield single for Sergio. Great effort by Justin Morris. But draws just put it in a great spot. That's a great stretch and catch right there. Strong throw. But the leadoff man beat it easily. Infield single brings up Connor Lacey. Yeah, that's what you like to see uh, from the pitcher. Draws on the mound today, helping himself out again with an infield single. Throw to first. Not in time. Lacey grounded out to second and hit that deep fly ball that went off the glove of Jared Gentilini. It brought home a oh, great play by the pitcher, the throw over, and they turned the double play. So that is a big help. Benny Andrioli definitely helping himself, turning a double play there. I'll take a look at the play here. Yep, just right back to the mound. Andrioli gets the glove down, and that's an easy turn. Yep, Morris one, and Toro on the other end of it. Now one six three on the double play. So two quick outs, and Kevin Dick in charge of trying to keep the inning alive here. He's 0 for 2. Strikeout on a ground out so far for Kevin Dick today, or tonight. Andrioli comes to the plate and hits the batter. And I'm not sure he didn't catch the elbow because that was the kind of reaction. That's one of those that stings you, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, Kevin Dick just taking a second to settle himself before he gets up the first baseline. Yeah, he's going to take a moment here. Well, he's originally going to take one. <laughs> They're just going to make sure. Probably kind of flex the wrist a little, squeeze the hand. Because it's cold out here, and that's not going to feel good in a little bit. Cleanup batter, Jacob Butcher. He lit off the fourth inning with a double and sc scored a run. At the time, it was the lead run, the third Millville run. Andrioli. With a throw over, just keeping him honest. No, that is not hammering your hair in the background, by the way. That's some action in the dugout. Yeah, <laughs> Mitchell's uh, playing liberties with the fence over there. I'm more amazed at how high up they are, but the umpire is pushing them back in. But almost pumped up over there. Ooh. That one nearly hits Butcher. It did come inside. And he just ducked away from it. Throw so over to first base. Not in time. So you take a look at the Millville dugout right there. They've had a lot to celebrate in the last inning or two. Again, a throw to first. Kevin Dick is back. You can't see it, but that noise you're hearing is them banging on the roof of the dugout. So yesterday we had the dog pound for Vineland. Today we have the hammer proof, Millville. Low. Two and oh the count. Caleb Hoffman is on deck, waiting for a chance. Throw over to first base. Not in time. Uh, Andrioli really keeping an eye on Dick over there at first. And he is taking a pretty healthy lead. And it's 3 0. And so you can kind of see why Andrioli's keeping an eye on him. Dick's getting at least two or three big strides over there. Butcher has himself in a good spot up 3 0. Strike down the middle. 
Yeah, he's looking at that all the way up 3-0, and you had a feeling Andreoli was just going to lay one in there. Still a good spot for Butcher. Throw to first base again. It's yeah, Kevin Dick's kind of like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> Come on, man. But I mean, look at this lead. Yeah. So no wonder that Andreoli's keeping an eye on him, but you don't want to keep throwing over too many times. Count is three and one with two outs and a runner at first base here in the top of the fifth. That one's fouled away, so the count now goes full. And yep. what that'll do is allow Dick to take off on the next pitch. Yeah, he's already given himself a good lead each time, so I'll take a couple more strides here. And as soon as Andrelli throws that ball, he'll be off. Of course, you have to make sure that he's going to the mound and not first base. At this point, you have to. Fouled back. That was, looked like a high pitch, but it's a foul away by Jacob Butcher. Uh, you don't want to get caught looking. So if it's anything close, you still want to have a defensive swing up there. But yeah, you're right. Butcher may have chased ball four. So we started all over again. 3-2. Now the throw to first. I mean, Dick is back. Well, safe to say Andreoli <laughs> knows he's over there. And I think he's... Kevin Dick's talking to Toro. Like, can you tell your pitcher to stop? Oh, great breaking ball. And that'll do it. Strikeout for Andreoli. So he helps himself very much. After the infield single, he got the double play ball. He did hit a batter, but then he gets the strikeout. Six strikeouts now in the game for Benny Andreoli. One runner left on one hit. We are going to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's 4-2 Thunderbolts. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No games, just great health care for everyone. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Sergio Draws warming up for the bottom of the fifth inning. Sergio has retired the last four batters. Yeah, he's done a nice job of settling in. I want to say hello to our viewers on Facebook Live. Willie Kirkland, Ricky Robinson is with us. Emmanuel Rivera, Gustavo Villafania. I hope I said that anywhere near correct. Matthew Peters, welcome Danielle Sui. We've seen her in the past. Glad to have you back. Daniel Lewis Stevenson is with us. Bernard Cause, Choss. Hope I got that one halfway right. Jim Parent is with us. Always a great uh, man to have aboard. Rob Just, Mitchell Grotti, Sandy Davis Gribble is with us, Jay Brian Johnson, Sean Thomas, Karen Cullen. We love having you all of you here. Tony uh, Boscalia, Bob Dickinson is with us, Kev Kenneth Mooney, Aaron Dale, Stephanie Shelton, Jonathan Shepard, Lucy Campbell, Ken Williams. Eric Oz with the OBG symbol, Alex Ramos. Many people watching, I, I believe, but we appreciate every one of you for being with us here on Twin Broadcasting. Ball one. Oh. Yeah, Felice able to hold back on his swing. Felice is one for two. It's time, time for sports on the first inning. Following a leadoff single, granted to short, the play made by Dick. And he gets the ball there. That is a tremendous play because that one ranged to his right. He had to backhand it, or actually glove it and then throw against his body. Yeah, and at least from this view, it looked like he kind of double clutched a little on the throw. So had enough speed on it to get Felice out at first and one quick out for Millville. 
Benny Andrioli, he's 0 for 2 on the day. Looks at strike one. Again, Sergio Draws has done a good job of getting that first, sometimes even second strike. He had a tough time in that first inning where he hit two batters and walked one, but he's been pretty solid since then. Yep, and that's a really good sign to see for Draws is settling in after a tough start, not letting that get in his head. Count even at one ball and one strike on Andreoli. Swings through that one, has had some bite to it. He was fooled on that. Draws doing a good job against the opposing pitcher. Swing and a miss. Seven strikeouts now for Sergio Draws, and that is the second out of this inning. I always like a strikeout, but you, all, you really like a strikeout against the opposing pitcher. They had him swinging right through it. So two quick outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Strike is called there. Justin Morris at the plate. He was hit by a pitch, scored a run in the first inning and then grounded out to Dick at the shortstop position. Fouled away. Two quick strikes now. Draws on Morris. Would like to get the third right here, not put any doubt on how he's feeling right now. The 0 2 offering. Chopper, this is going to be a tough play. Nice job of handling it, throwing it across. Good scoop by Lacey. So a nice play by Mulheran to get to the ball and a good scoop at first base by Connor Lacey. Another one, two, three inning. Back to backers as we watch the play here. Just a little chopper. He reached out to get that ball. Good job of getting in position to make a strong throw. And Connor Lacey with a good scoop. Looks back at the umpire, says, yep, we got it. So we are through five innings of play here at Vineland High School. Millville leads Vineland four to two. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. At High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Twin Broadcasting, Facebook Live, Twin Broadcasting, YouTube Live, Channel 22. Three ways for you to watch us anytime we have a sporting event on the uh, station here. And of course, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, Twin Broadcasting, and follow us on Instagram, qbc.tv. Oh, you forgot for a second. A little uh, traumatic effect. Exactly. See, you picked up on that. Fred Melendez along with Ariel Melendez, we are glad that you're with us. Still very much in doubt here as it's just a two-run lead for Millville, four to two. And Vineland, we, they showed us yesterday that they can score in bunches. Back-to-back -back five run rallies in the last couple innings. So this is far from over. Yeah, Millville wants to find a way to put up more insurance. He said Vineland can score in bunches if need be. Caleb Hoffman was part of that two-run go-ahead rally with a perfect uh, sacrifice bunt. He was officially 0 for 1, and he fouls the next pitch away. One ball and one strike. One one offering. Oh, they called the strike. Yeah, that one getting a little bit inside on Hoffman, but catches enough to be called a strike. And called that one a ball, so it's was, two and two. That was a tight one, a tough one for Hoffman to look at. Ends up working out in his favor. Two balls, two strikes. 
That one's launched in the center field. It's going to fly the green. That one was kind of a uh, half swing as well. He just wanted to put the ball in play, and he did it perfectly. Yeah, that's, again, where you commit, and you just hope you get the bat on the ball at that point. Got her off the end of the bat, too. So a leadoff single by Caleb Hoffman. Cole Mulherron was part of that two-run rally that gave Millville the lead. A double to left field that knocked in a run. He is one for two. Flew out to center his first time up. Third first. Got to tell you, Andrioli is not shy in getting the ball to first base trying to pick off a runner. Yeah, he's definitely keeping a good eye on them over there. Inside. Tried to get that to tail back over the plate, but it stayed inside. One ball, no strikes. Fouled back to the right side. Count evens up at one ball and one strike. Caleb Hoffman with the leadoff single is the runner at first base. Pitch is low. <laughs> Mulherin steps out of the back, uh, box and now steps back in, ready for the 2 1 offering from Andrioli. Rounded towards short. Flip to second for one. The throw to first is over the first baseman's head, but he'll stay at first base. So it's just basically a fielder's choice with the first out of the inning. As here you see, it's grounded to Morris at shortstop. Good flip to second. Trying to get a little extra on the throw there, and he threw it over Toro's head. But uh, you see Femia. Uh, I don't know no, if that's No, that's, uh, that's one of the assistant yeah. coaches. We, we haven't... Uh, we personally haven't figured out which one is on first. That's Hunter, the first base coach. Fimiani is the third base coach. He was very emphatic on telling that Mulherin to stay at first base despite the ball getting away. A very half-hearted throw over to first base. I mean, wasn't going to get anybody with that toss. But again, keeping an eye on on the batter, does it again. In the batter's box right now for Millville is Marcellus Preston. He struck out and then had a single that knocked in the go-ahead run back in the uh, fourth inning. You know what? You have to wonder if Millville's trying to do on the base path is kind of get in the head of Andrioli as he throws over for a third time. Maybe see if he can get him off his game by having him worry about the runner on first. Strike is called. Well, it wasn't phased on that pitch. Melville's definitely been very generous on their leads over on first. That one's drilled to center field. Oh, I it laid up. Sorry about that. It looked like it was going to go further than it was. But the play is easily made, actually, by Xavier Etheridge. Yeah, it could get under it just enough to get that over the head of Etheridge. Did take a look here. Yeah, just got underneath it too much. It should take back. He got under it more than he wanted to. And another throw over from Andrioli. Doesn't matter how many outs or what the count is. Andrioli's throwing over to first. As Yet another. It's about the fifth throw over. Trevor Yeager in the batter's box had a beautiful safety squeeze his last time up that brought home the fourth run for Millville. He's also struck out. You see Cole Mulherin again over there at first, taking a good lead. Pitch to the plate is fouled away to the right.
Mario Cottrell is the on-deck batter for the Thunderbolts. He'd like to come up. There's your man at first base, Mulherin, taking his lead. Ball is called, one ball and one strike. Miani making sure everyone's on the same page, both Hager and Mulherin, who again has to dive back and almost stumbled getting there. I think he's tired of it too. But that's not going to stop him from well, taking a look big at the lead. lead he's getting. Yeah, yeah Milmo big. hasn't been phased by the fact that Andrioli's throwing over quite a bit. Well, the whole idea of getting the good lead is to be able to get back. You take it as big as you can and make sure that you can get back if it is thrown over there. So Milmo's doing a good job of that. I don't think Andrioli likes the location of that pitch. Just again throws over. But yeah, good job by Mulherin. He's not leaning to where he can't get back. And at some point, <laughs> at some point you gotta throw a pitch. Two and one pitch. Three and one. Yeah, you're in a good situation here, up three one on the count. Noble. Still hanging on to a 4-2 lead. They really would like to add on to it. We get late in the ball game. Oh, that one's going into the gap. It's gonna hang up a long time. Actually goes over the head of the center fielder and it's bobbled out there. That's easily gonna bring home a run. And now trying to get three out of it and he's going to do so. Sliding in safely at third base. Trevor Yeager with a bomb to center. And it's now five to two Thunderbolts. Yeager had himself in a great situation, up 3-1 in the count. Found something he liked to hit on this pitch, and yet, now that one definitely carried. So you watch the center fielder going back, going back, still going back. And that one hits the track on the bounce. Then, if that then, little bobble is what allowed Yeager to get to third, but really nice job by Trevor Yeager. Sliding into third base, gets himself an RBI, and... That's gonna do it on the mound for Benny Andrioli. And it looks like Mario Toro is gonna come in again in relief as he takes off all the wrist tape. Or sorry, that's Etheridge. We did also see Etheridge get the final out against Millville yesterday. I saw the hair from a distance and thought it was Toro. It's one eight instead of eight. Well, it is Xavier. Etheridge now taking over on the mound. Does that mean that Andrioli will stay in the game is the question. Yeah, we don't trying. get these changes, so we have to keep our eye on what's what. Etheridge was the second baseman. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. It's hard to tell if I can see a number two out there still. As I see Toro for sure, Morris is out there. So is, well, that's you have the, uh, Felice. No, sorry. That's Samuelito Garcia who came in, number 14. So it looks like he may have gone to second. We'll figure that out as they line up. Actually, he's going over to the opposite side. So looks like Samuelito Garcia is at third base now. I know Mario Toro stayed at first. I can tell you that much. So I believe that moved Kronk over to second. I think I saw a five over there. And our shortstop should still be Morris. We'll figure out if any of that was correct. Well, we won't get informed of anything, so. Well, oh, it definitely <laughs> looks like Garcia is at third. That much I can tell you. I don't have the best of eyesight. I'm trying to look on our view here. Yeah, that is Kronk at second. So it looks like we just switched around the infield a little bit, but Andrew only out of the game. Now he had a tough time up at the plate as well in this one. He's been struck out twice and grounded out as well. All right, so Mario Gattrell is the batter after the pitching change. 
Cottrell got the first hit and was the first base runner of the game for Millville from the nine hole. And he uh, triggered a two run rally as a result. He's also struck out, so he's one for two with a run scored. 0-1 pitch, sails high. Lucy Campbell checking in, says, good job, Trevor. Certainly put a good swing on that one. 1-1 one, one offering from Etheridge is fouled away. If Brenda Stewart here, she's rooting on Violin. They're looking to Etheridge to stop anything further. Ahead in the count, one and two. Ball two is called. So uh, thank you to one of the Millville coaches. We have been informed it's Mario Cottrell Jr. Make okay. sure we get that okay. all set, so we appreciate that. Cottrell Jr. fouls that one away, stays two and two. Trevor Yeager at third base following his RBI hit the center field. That one's drilled and that's gonna be a base hit. Another run scores. Good piece of hitting and that ball is kicked but it won't allow the runner to advance. Mario Cottrell Jr. with his second hit. And it's now a six to two lead for Millville. Now, Millville showing they can pour on runs as well. That's the third time in the last four innings Millville's put up two runs and just nicely drilled out there to left field. And what Cottrell Jr. manages to do is to turn over the lineup as well as we're back to the top of the uh, lineup for Millville. disagreement you might be able to hear what it's about but well I heard what it was about well yeah uh, we've got our field mic again so draws swings and fouls it off Sergio draws has two hits and three times up has scored a run Oh, one pitch, runner breaking, yeah, no that, throw. That one got away from the catcher. So Cottrell Jr. moves up. Yeah, nice, easy steal there. Puts a runner in scoring position for draws. One, one offering, ball two. Sean, I'm gonna go with Tim Cow. Trevor smoked that ball. Tim Cow, that sounds a little bit better. Yep, Trevor did certainly smoke that one out there and he wants to come home as well. He's gonna take third as well. He is safe. And he's taking a second because I don't know if he just got the wind knocked out of him on that. So I think he just needs a second to adjust. <laughs> yeah, Control Junior. Make sure everything's yeah, still make sure in place. everything's where it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> two and two the count. Bold decision to take third, I'll say that. Two and two pitch. Outside. Full count. Draws will try to add another run to this Millville lead. Pitch from Etheridge. That would still the left field, but the left fielder seems like he's right there and makes the stab for the catch. So good play by Jared Gentilini to end this inning. Pretty well hit, but a good play by Gentilini retires the side. Not before Millville gets a couple more runs 
They do it on three hits, and they leave one man aboard. As we take a look at the last play of the inning. Actually, this is uh, yeah. the base hit. I thought, thought that was uh, yeah, that's Cottrell. Cottrell. Yep, that's Cottrell Jr. with a nice hit to left field to drive in another run for Millville. Up 6-2 to two as we head to the bottom of the sixth. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Sergio Draws, starting pitcher for Millville, still on the hill. He's retired the last seven batters. And even though he had that rough first inning where Violet scored their two runs, he's only allowed two hits. I've been taking a look at YouTube. Lorenzo Lewis checking in. Trevor with the nuke. Got a lot of fans of that Jaeger hit. That gave Millville a four-run lead. This is who Violin wants to see up right now. Number eight, Mario Toro. The middle of the order, eight, four, five, and six. Toro so far today was hit by a pitch and flied out. Grounded to second. Throw to first and another good scoop. I'll tell you what, Connor Leeson's <laughs> in his money at first base yeah, with he, the scoops. He's, a, he's had to pick a couple throws there. As Just call him the ice cream man today. Yeah, that's a bad one. I don't know how to follow that. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, the important thing is that the Millville defense has the leadoff batter retired. And Draws really has settled in. Especially these last couple innings. That one's drilled to center field, but tracking it down and making the catch is Cottrell Jr. Pretty well stroked, but Cottrell Jr. made it a boot point. Really had to have liked what you've seen from Draws in these last couple innings. And put a good swing on it, but Cottrell Jr. in the perfect spot to catch that one, and Jaws will try to get himself another one, two, three inning. He faces Christian Willis, grounded towards third, and that one, he gets it on a bounce. Does he get enough time? No. Now that one gets away from Lacey anyway. That was a tough play all the way around. And did that hit? Yeah, I think that hit him over there. I have to imagine that's why he's on the ground. And Christian Willis. Not looking too well at the moment. Well, he's going to take a second. Yeah, might have got him on that leg. He's going to take a second to get up. Yeah, this was going to be a tough play over at third for Mulherin. Does a nice job to get it on the bobble, but by the time he gets it over. Yeah, it got past Lacey. Not sure if there was a collision there or not. Yeah, something. And that, of oh, course, no, I think well, Lewis yeah. may have just misstepped. Does it look like he was going to turn, went down, but he's still down. They're checking on, I don't know if it's the ankle or what. It's definitely the left side though. Yeah, he uh, kind of lost his buckled, footing after, yeah. Yeah, after he went past the bag. He saw his leg slip out. So they're checking the knee and that's never a good thing. You don't want to be playing around with the knee area. Yeah, especially when it's a non-contact thing, but luckily looks like he's gonna kind of shake it off and he doesn't look any worse for wear. He's just gonna do some high steps right now to kick it out. And that's what you like to see. You always, it's always tough when you see it kind of, at least to us, look like a non-contact situation. Well, that play ended a nine batter streak of outs for Draws and nice round of applause for the first, uh, man at first base. Coach Fimiani coming out, giving his team some encouragement to get this last out. Yeah. 
Stepping into the batter's box now is Xavier Etheridge, who's now the pitcher for Vineland. He fouls it away to the right side. Yeah, Brenda Stewart again checking in. Says, great hit nephew, talking about Christian Willis. Sure, give it to them, please. Please, no did it. No did it. Charles E. Warren the third. Three pitches and almost three outs. Way to be effective, Milva. A couple of dueling fans here. Is that one again? Mahern will get a second chance. Plays the bounce. And throws it high. Did he get the tag? I don't think so. No, Milva's nope. coming off the field, so wow. he must have got the tag on him. Lacey playing some really great first base over there. Had to kind of go up for that one, but manages to get the tag on the batter. It's tough to see for us, and I think tough to see here, but Mulherin gets another chance over here at third, plays the bounce nicely, has time, and yeah, you can't really tell. Oh, right there, yep, Lacey went up oh, for it, too. It. Yeah, Lacey really had to get on the hops for that one. But got the glove on him, does it a couple more times just to make sure. Yeah, big credit. Uh, you know what? I don't know that Etheridge hustled as much as he could have because I don't know if he should have been out there if you know what I'm trying to say. But Lacey makes the good tag. He got him before he got the bag, so that is an out. And it retires to side. One man left on base for the fighting clan. Just one inning of regulation remaining. Millville leads 6-2. to two. So we are back live here on Quick Broadcasting. See what else we have here. We have Charles Warren. That's right. He talks about how Cottrell turned over the lineup with his base hit the last time up. Yeah, the bottom of the lineup doing a nice job for Melville, both Trevor Yeager and Mario Cottrell Jr. And we talked about that. Sean Timko likes what uh, Trevor yeah. did. Trevor Yeager with that triple, of course. The center field. Had a boy wheels. I like that. <laughs> yeah, he got around those spaces in a hurry. Lenny Mazzola as well. Way to go, Trevor. Huge two out in. Yeah, you love to see that, especially with two outs in the inning. As the man we've been talking about with the nice glove over at first base will lead off the inning for Melville. Connor Lacey. It's been a tough day at the plate for him for the most part. He's grounded into a double play his last time out. He has reached base one time so far. And again, Lenny Mazzola, that's right, Connor is the defensive MVP of this game. He's made some really nice plays over at first base, especially that last one. Yep, made a lot of good scoops to get out, and that last play stretched himself upward. And place the tag, he puts it in the hole. Good play. That's a great running play there by uh, the new second baseman, whose name I didn't put that down here. Is, uh, that was Kronk. Yeah, that's Kronk moving. He moved from third to second. Again, they don't give us changes here, so we have to kind of judge the best we can who's over in these positions. Yeah, I think uh, I think we did get that figured out with Kronk moving over with the pitching change and Etheridge on the mound. Kevin Dick the batter. Gets hit. I think so. Um, well, no, maybe maybe oh, not. Oh, wow, that looked oh, like it Oh, it sounded hit. like it hit him. Well, it hit the glove. But... I think that's that must have been what I heard. Well, Kevin but Dick's nonetheless, not yeah, nonetheless, he's not happy about facing another pitch inside. One and one the count. Dick is 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. And he drew a lot of attention from uh, Benny Andreoli. Lots of pickoff moves were made over there. Two one offering is ball three. Yo, we got it. Hello, 
Etheridge with the three-one pitch is fouled off, and yeah, Kevin, Kevin Dick wanted that one. Yeah, he's not happy with himself. Manages to foul it off though. As the count's now full, but he wanted all of that. He went after a high pitch, and the shortstop's going to range under it. Catch is made by Justin Morris. Two quick outs in the you inning for Etheridge. Jacob Butcher now the batter. Had a leadoff double in a two-run fourth inning. He is one for three in the day. And Etheridge trying to give Vineland a chance down by four. He's got the first two outs of this inning. Gets a strike on the first pitch to Butcher. And Etheridge will step off for a moment. Yeah, maybe was it uh, agreeing with the pitch or just fell off about it. Zips down low, the count evens at one ball, one strike. Butcher likes what he decided to go with. <laughs> Next pitch on the way, inside. And we've got a full government name coming from the dugout. We are full naming Jacob Butcher. <laughs> Is that what that was? I didn't quite catch the middle name, but yeah, we are we are going full government name, so that's how much Momo really wants him to get a hit here. Good eye there as the ball is up high. Three balls and one strike. He'll take a walk as well. Etheridge ready, comes to the plate and offers ball four. So that'll be the second time that Butcher's on base. And we'll probably see a courtesy runner here, Dolan Potts. Yep, now we will right on cue, come right out to run for Butcher. And Butcher's gonna get himself ready for the bottom of the seventh, but I think he, as well as the Smilville team, like the top inning to continue. Number three, Dolan Potts. Ball one on the next batter, Caleb Hoffman. The DH for the Thunderbolts, one for two officially with a single and a uh, well-executed sacrifice bunt his first and uh, second time. Out. That sacrifice bunt helped along a two-run rally in the fourth inning that put Millville in front. Guthridge doing the same, keeping an eye on Potts as... Hit pretty well, but in the center fielder's grasp and he puts it away, had plenty of time to set himself. And Christian Willis puts the ball away. So Millville is retired. Just one walk and one man left on base. The bottom of the seventh coming around. We'll see if Millville can finish the job here at 6-2. to two. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking, which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as the Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, president of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. After a tough first inning, and had, did himself a pretty good job the rest of the way. But Melville's going to look to Lacey to get the final three outs, and we'll get a little verification on this. But I do believe that's Caleb Hoffman who moved over to first base. He was the DH for Melville, so hopefully it doesn't matter if they forfeit DH. 
least he will try to get the final three. He's got a comfortable four-run lead. And we're doing a nice job of adding on a couple runs. And he's going to face the eight, nine, and one hitters. Good spot if you're Lacey. Now, Melville's, Melville's bottom of the lineup's done a good job for them, but not much to say from the bottom of the lineup. Genelini has walked, but he struck out. And Anthony Gonzalez is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts in the game. Lacey will try to make quick work of the rest of this violent lineup so Melville can split the series. That is Caleb Hoffman at first base on the and the scheduled batter is Jared Gentilini, but that's number 14. Is that Sam, oh, well, there were some changes, that's right. Yeah. So Sam Molito Garcia is now up to bat. So I don't really know what, how, how Vineland adjusted the order, but all we can say is Garcia is up to bat. So I take it Gentilini is somehow out of this game, and maybe there was a new outfielder as well that we didn't catch. Strike is called. Put the bun out there, did Garcia. Pulled back, but he just watched a perfect strike. A one offering from Connor Lacey has popped up. Is it in play? They, they will make the play. That is the new first baseman. So first base has done pretty, pretty good job for Millville in this one. Hoffman who made the play over there just before the Vineland dugout. So that's one down. Anthony Gonzalez, he has struck out looking two times. Lacey steps back. Yeah, Butcher's gonna go ahead and talk to Lacey just get on the same page here for this at bat. Nice. He's got the first out of this inning. The nice catch by Hoffman over by the dugout. Great observation by Charles Warren here. Energies their way up in the dugouts, making this rivalry just as good as its football rivalry. Yeah, Millville's like dugout that. has definitely been loud. They've quieted down that violent dugout. We haven't heard the dogs barking in quite a while. No, we haven't. Popped up in the same area. Is this one going to be able to be caught? It is. It is. Now that's Let's again get Hoffman. A number. No, it's Hoffman. It is Hoffman. number 15. Okay. He's made a couple nice plays in foul territory, and <laughs> Noble's got one more out. And they can take a 6-2 victory. They're going to have the top of the lineup to deal with Johan Felice. Well, you like having the two outs. Yeah, yeah it's always it's always good when you can go into this at a four-run lead and just breathe. Next pitch by Lacey is a strike call. Police singled and scored in the first. He's been out twice since then, a fly ball to left and a ground out to short. Ball one, one and one to come. One, one offering, a swing and a miss at a high heat. So Millville, one strike away from splitting this back-to-back -back series with Vineland. That one's drilled to center field, so that's going to be a single for Felice, his second hit of the game. So the inning stays alive, the game stays alive. Just a good piece of hitting right up the middle. Center field single for Felice. And then we'll see who the batter is. See if we can get a number on him, because I don't think it's Andrew Oli. That is a different batter in the batter's box. I don't think it's Andrew Oli. Unless they reinserted him. Lock it out. Lock it out. 
Lacey ready with the 0-1 offering. Grounded. Shortstop knocks it down. And they get to play at second base. They say yes it did in time. And Millville pulls it out 6-2. to two. So there you see the celebration on the field as Millville comes back from last night. So yesterday's 14-4 loss and wins this one 6-2. to two. And defensively, they got it done throughout this inning and throughout the game. And what a job by starting pitcher Sergio Draz, who did have a rough first inning, but then he settled right in and did not allow any more scoring by the fighting clan. So there you have it, Vineland and Millville going through the uh, sportsmanship handshakes. A good battle, and Millville wins it this time 6-2. to two. Wow, what a game. Again, Vineland got the early jump in this one, 2-0 in the first. But Millville posted three uh, different rallies of two runs apiece to win this one 6-2. to two. So The two teams going through the handshakes, and we'll get our star of the game in just a moment. And there you see Dan Fimiani congratulating a few players from Vineland. <laughs> Nods his head there, and, of course, it gives a nice handshake to the opposing coach, Kyle Jones. We'll be back in just a moment with our post-game show in just a bit. All right, so the Millville squad is welcoming Fimiani as his team gets their second win of the season. And it's, it, no matter what the situation is, it's always sweet for Millville to beat Vineland and vice versa. So we'll take a timeout now as they kneel down and have their coach talk to them in the postgame, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking, which is small-town focused and customer-based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as the Thunderbolt Airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No games, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God, and he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as the Thunderbolt Airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. 
Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No games, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Welcome back to Violin High School. Under the lights Friday night, and it's the Millville Thunderbolts who come away with the victory over the Viting, uh, Vineland Fighting Clan. Final score of 6-2. to two. This game, of course, uh, looked like it was going to be another one of those games in that first inning. Bottom of the first, Vineland got its two runs as Sergio Draz ran into a little control issue, hit two batters, the leadoff walk, a wild pitch here and there, and uh, the, the walk after that. But Vineland only got two runs in that inning, so they did manage to limit the damage. And from there on, Sergio Draz was in command. He only allowed one more hit over the next five innings. Some great defensive efforts by the entire infield play. Um, the shortstop third baseman, Connor Lacey, scooped up everything that he had to scoop up at first base on all the throws. He also handled that one high throw and got the tag down on Etheridge that made it out. Didn't look like he was going to get that out. But defensively, Millville got it done tonight. And uh, they got the bats going in the middle innings as well. Three separate two-run rallies. Everybody contributing with a triple by Trevor Yeager, who really hustled his way into that RBI triple. And again, the third inning, fourth inning, and sixth innings, Millwall managed to spot two runs, put two runs on the scoreboard to win this one, 6-2 to two in the end game. We're going to have uh, our stars of the game. We're going to bring on the starting pitcher, Sergio Draws, and we're going to try to get uh, Trevor Yeager as well to talk about what it's like to run out a triple. We'll be back in just a moment. Six to two, Millville wins. Our stars of the game coming up. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No games, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. 
At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Well, there's a lot of joy in Millville tonight as Friday Night Lights turns out to be very successful for the Millville Thunderbolts as they pick up their second win of the season. Our starting pitcher and one of our stars of the game, Sergio, draws with us. Sergio, first of all, congratulations on the victory. Thanks. We're going to talk about the bad stuff and get out of the way first. That first inning, a tough inning. Yesterday, a lot of walks and hit batters. Today, it looked like it was going to be kind of the same thing. Uh, you hit two batters, you walked one. The leadoff single by Felice, and they got their two runs. But after that... You only allowed one hit over the next, uh, I guess it was five innings. You went six innings. And by my count, if I look correctly here, you had seven strikeouts. So pretty good. After that first inning, everything looked like you had some command there. Yeah. So talk about your pitching today. Um, first inning, struggled a little bit, finding the zone. But after that, I settled in, got all the jitters out, and just figured it out. Mm -hmm. I had all, all three pitches today. They were all working well, so, yeah, that's what got me through the game. Yeah, it didn't look like they really had a chance to put anything together after that first inning. Talk about your first baseman and the scoops he was making to get those outs. He's awesome. I can always rely on Connor. That's my dog right there. <laughs> and I want you to talk about Trevor Yeager a little bit. We're going to have him on in just a second. But to see him hustle out that triple, talk about what that, what that hit meant to this squad. Oh, that's awesome because he's been struggling a lot this year, so – that was that was a that was a good one to break it out on, and then of course the uh, final three outs of that uh, seventh inning, two uh, tough foul outs. That uh, I guess it was that who they put at first base there, uh, the designated hitter, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Hoffman. Hoffman went over and got two big outs to start the rally, and then the two middle infielders, of course, did a great job. Kevin Dick and Yeager for that last out. You yeah. guys played some defense as well tonight. Yep. So talk about the way that uh, the guys came together with the gloves. Uh, it was awesome. It's it's easy when you can go out there and trust your defense when they make plays behind you. Mm -hmm. A little strange to be away from the shortstop spot? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, you did a great job after that first inning. Congratulate you on getting the victory. Uh, well done tonight. Thank and we're going to have Trevor Yeager step in in just a moment. So stay with us. One final word from Trevor Yeager, and we'll be right back with that. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as the Thunderbolt Airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. I'm not much of a talker, so. Yeah, that's okay. All We're right. going to make it nice and easy for you. We're going right. to talk about your triple and whatnot. <laughs> but we're catching us talking a little bit before the broadcast. <laughs> that's Trevor Yeager here telling me. It's not much of a talker. We're okay. going to make it a little bit easy right. uh, for you. So we'll get right away to that triple. You were moving around the bases there. Were you yeah. thinking triple all the way? Well, I was originally thinking double, but then I saw Coach Fim waving, and I knew, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, – we'll just talked with Sergio Draz as well. Yeah. Did a nice job on the mound. Settled in really nicely yeah. for you guys after that tough first inning. We usually see him at short, shortstop, but he did a pretty pretty good job on the mound. I want to talk about his effort out there for you guys. Uh, yeah, Sergio, um, he's going to have to pitch a lot like for us this year. I mean, he had a good one at prep, and we didn't really do anything, and it was just good for him to 
kind of do the same thing and us actually give him some support this time. And looking at uh, some of your other defense, Connor Lacey, who came in in relief, yeah. had to make a couple of really nice mm -hmm. plays over there at first. He was stretching, he yeah. was jumping, did everything he could for you, uh, both at first base and then to close out the game for you guys. Yeah, I, I love Connor at first base. I mean, there's not really much that gets by him at first base. It's pretty good. And you guys, we've seen you guys battle a lot this season. You guys don't seem to give up at any point. Just speak to the mentality of this team where you guys always feel like you're in the game no matter what. Yeah, I, I mean, sometimes uh, in the beginning of the season we were slow getting uh, energy, and um, it's just good for us to uh, get energy more through the game and not just at the end, like start in the beginning and go through. And I'll give you one last easy one. All right. How's it feel to be your rival? Feels great. <laughs> we saw was... you guys doing a little chicken dance in there. Yeah. I think you joined a little late, but yeah. that, that's got to feel good yeah, for you guys now. Yeah, it feels great. Yeah. Yeah, so that's our second star of the game. Trevor Yeager had that big triple uh, to help Millville out to the 6-2 to two win. We'll be right back here to tally up some final notes. So stay with us here on Quinn Broadcasting. We'll be right back. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No games, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God, and he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. It's time for sports on the Quinn Broadcasting Network. QBC brings you local sporting events, action pack specials and play-by-play -play coverage of the area's sporting activities. From Pop Warner to college sports, Quinn Broadcasting covers it all. Join us now here on QBC for today's exciting event. You know, occasionally I keep hearing that the rivalry between Vineland and Millville is not quite as intense as it used to be, but you couldn't tell that by these last two games that we covered for you last night, of course, Vineland winning 14 to four. And tonight after a rough first inning by Sergio draws, Millville put it together, pitching defense hitting and got the six, two victory. So a couple of other things I noticed, just little things that I pick up on both starting pitchers were pretty good tonight. Uh, although uh, the Thunderbolts got the better job overall as uh, ben Benny Andrioli and uh, Sergio draws with the starters. I saw them after the game meet over here to my left, and they were exchanging, uh, you know, gratuities, congratulating each other. So even though there still is a rivalry, which is heated on the field, that was nice to see. Yeah, we saw that yesterday, too. It, it, it was after the game. It was after we were off. But a lot of these guys know each other. They grew up with each other. They probably play with each other and travel or wreck or any kind of thing. We saw them. A lot of handshakes, a lot of hugs. There's, there's no love lost for sure um, when you're – you know, kind of in between the lines and in the game. But, yeah, they, they have a ton of respect for each other when it all comes down to it. And that's, that's really what you love to see is that sportsmanship afterwards. You can be in a tough game like it was for Melville yesterday. You lose by 10. You're not happy, but no, no. you have that respect. Well, it, it also got away from them late. It was five very tough innings. Four to four was the score for a good while. But Lila put together those big rallies to win it going away. Uh, just one of those things that happens once in a while. But if you don't think this game meant something to Millville tonight, the cheer and the, the rousing all through the yeah, game, the, the you, dugout. you heard the dugout, and all through uh, the celebration at the end, and in the even in the outfield, left field, where they gathered to talk post game, we could hear the loudest of their cheering over here. So it meant a lot to them tonight. Yeah, and that's really good to see for Millville, who struggled this season. But you see how close they are as a team. You see how these guys push for one another. I mean, you could tell all game long. You could hear the chants from the dugout. You could hear everybody rooting on everybody uh, to get something to happen in this game. And they're not where they want to be right now, two and six now on the season. They've got time. They've got plenty of time to figure this one out. And it's a game like this that can help. 
it, it brings you together even more when you can get a big win against your rival. And again, you heard them all game long on the dugout, banging on the dugout, cheering for each other as loud as they could. They quieted down that violent team over there. I don't think we heard them after the first few innings. There was no barking. No, no barking. Uh, so they, like they, they, put the, they put the dogs down, I guess you could say, in the nicest way. Uh, they really didn't give them anything to cheer about. And that's all thanks to Sergio Draz, who really settled down on the mound. That was the biggest thing we talked about at the beginning of the game, was not giving up walks, not putting yourself in those situations where you're just putting runners on easily. And Draz struggled in that first do in doing so, but he really settled it down and I think had a chance to close this one out. But when we talked to Connor Lacey before, him and Coach Fimiani have a lot of respect between each other and a nice job to see them reward him and, and kind of finish that one out. Now, of course, uh, give credit to Benny Andreola. He retired the first eight batters he faced, striking out half of them. But then the number nine hitter, I'm going to give credit. I want to mention the whole lineup for Melville tonight because they all contributed. Sergio Draws, Connor Lacey, Kevin Dick, uh, Jacob Butcher, P uh, Caleb Hoffman, Cole Mulherin, Marcellus Preston, Trevor Yeager, and Cottrell got it going. After those first eight outs, he had the two-out single. Millville wound up scoring two runs at the end. They got back in the game. They tied it at two. And then from then on, everybody just contributed something. Yeah, and, you know, speaking to Cottrell Jr. and uh, Trevor Yeager, who we talked to, it's that bottom of the lineup getting things done for Millville and finding ways to turn the lineup over and give their uh, give the top of the lineup something to do. We saw Yeager do that with the triple. We saw Cottrell do that a couple times. Uh, he got on base twice, uh, two singles, uh, allowing Millville to get back to that top of the lineup. And that's really what you like to see from the bottom of the bottom of the order. If they can find any way to turn that lineup over and, you know, get guys like Draws, Lacey back up to the plate, that's a positive sign for them. And Yeager and Cottrell Jr. did just that today. All right, so there you have it. Millville winning a 6-2 to two final here on a uh, Vineland Friday night's baseball game. Uh, remind me of the camera people, folks. Who were the camera people? I don't have Owen and Vineland. So, okay. yeah, so, yeah, so we, we did. We took the feed. The feed you saw from up top, uh, courtesy of Vineland. We appreciate them for letting us uh, use their camera view and our own cameraman, who was fearing for his life a little bit. <laughs> up there, uh, yeah, Owen, I appreciate his dedication up there to be able to, I mean, you got to do what you got to do uh, at some points. And Milva was certainly uh, shaking the top of that dugout for him, but he did a nice job up there getting some of those shots that you saw. And yeah, again, we, we appreciate Violin for letting us have that camera view from up top. Okay, so uh, also want to make mention, Pastor Richard F. Myers, right? That's the graphics guy. He gave us all the graphics that you see get leading in and out of those innings. Our director, Ryan Narowski, Ariel Melendez, yours truly, Fred Melendez. Hope you enjoyed tonight's game. It was a good one. 6-2 to two on the winning side. They are now 2-6 and six on the season. Vineland now 4-4. Four and four. We will see you soon. Of course, tomorrow is semi-pro football, so join us for that game here on Quinn Broadcasting from Bridgeton. Good night, everybody, and have a great weekend. Millville wins it 6-2. to two. This has been a QBC television production in association with our partners and sponsors. QBC broadcasts on Comcast Cable Channel 22 and live streams its programming on Facebook and YouTube. All rights reserved by Quinn Media and QBC. Programming that serves the South Jersey market.